I submitted a pair of uh, beaded uh, woman gauntlet gloves um, on brain tan hide, deer hide, uh, with a rose, a floral pattern on the on the cuff, fully beaded fringe, and been doing bead work probably since I've been five years old. It's something that was passed on to me by my great grandmother Eva Piffero. She's from from down in we call it Cordis, and that's down there in Crescent Valley. And she learned from her mother, my great great grandmother Mary Hall. And uh, Mary Hall's work is in our Northeastern Nevada Museum on display. Her baskets and and uh, her buckskin and beadwork. And she also has some beaded gauntlets there. The gloves, their idea, I believe, I believe comes from uh, from the cavalry, because when the, the the cavalry used to wear gloves, it was it was similar. It was a gauntlet glove that you'd see that they wear, and so uh, the Native Americans or the Indians, we we probably got a glove or something and made a pattern of it, and just went from there with it. Just uh, expanded on the idea and. and and back in the day, and the, I don't know if you want to say the Buffalo Bill Wild West show and all that, you see a lot of them uh, beaded gauntlet gloves and a lot of the, the earlier cowboys, they would wear them. You, you see a lot of old pictures with uh, uh, gauntlet gloves that are beaded and buckskin, you know, uh, gloves. And back in, like say, the Wild West shows and that, uh, there was, uh, You'd see old pictures of, of Lady, you know, that um, maybe Annie Oakley. She would have a pair of gloves like that or something like that. So it was, it was kind of a popular, popular item back in the day and, and more or less like a, a, a parade item or a show item when you're out, you know, when, uh, showing your horse. And that's, that's where you see a lot of it nowadays is uh, like you're, you're cutting horse shows and that, you know. The, People get dressed up, and, and they would wear something like that. So it's still functional now. And and a lot of the the ranchers back in the day, they liked the buckskin gloves because if it was made with real heavy hide, when you're working a bob wire fence, that bob wire won't go through that buckskin. So it was very functional use back in the day. It's, it's you know had its purpose as a work glove. My daughter Sydney, I'm trying to teach her. Um, the art of bead working and uh, she has helped me tan hides last summer so she understands the work involved with that because uh, we we do process our own hides the same way that it's been done for thousands and thousands of years with you know brain brain tan solution so it, it's our method that we use to tan is something that hasn't changed since whenever it was discovered thousands and thousands of years ago so it's, a, it's basically the same method that uh, I'm sharing with her and teaching her, and hopefully she uh, carries it on one day. Um, I started from a photograph of a um, kind of a wall of rocks with some trees on top, um, and there was a reflection of the lake or the lake below it, and so I. Um, did kind of a, I did a drawing on my paper with um, pencil and found the basic main shapes of the painting. And then um, the kind of art that I like to do, the kind of watercolor I like to do, is I like to put down paint in on the paper and then go back and find the shapes that are in the paper or in the paint. And so that's how I found the rocks. Um, and then I did the same thing with the trees. I dropped paint in and then went back and, and uh, created the image. Um, so that's the kind of painting I like to do pretty free form. Okay. Yeah, I actually submitted three items this year, um, two photographs and one poem. I submitted a picture of a Corsair airplane. It's a warbird that I saw at the Reno Air Races. I have a love for airplanes, always have, since I was little. My dad's a pilot. Um, 
I've always wanted to learn how to fly, but since I can't, I go and enjoy everything that everybody else can do, so. And it was sunset, and it was, it just seemed to me like it was the perfect time to take that picture, so I did. Um, I actually did some volunteer work for the um, traveling wall for the um, veterans, so that's what I wrote about this time. And uh, just, I think you have to have your heart in the right place. So mm -hmm. it was really deep what I wrote. It meant something. So yeah, I have to, it had, something has to really touch me in order to, to write about it. So or be really, you know, heartfelt. semester I submitted a digital collage um, and it was com it was composed of a number of photographs most of them taken on different journeys overseas in fact a few of them were taken on the last trip I did for GBC to Italy and Switzerland so I've been working on a kind of a theme uh, it sounds kind of odd but I like going to cemeteries and finding uh, the graves that have actual photographs in them. You know, you've seen that where they have a photograph and then there's glass over it to protect it. And I, I take pictures of those photographs and then I merge it in with a collage of different things. So the one I have for our agenda for this time is actually a photograph taken from um, Cemetery Island in Venice. So it's just a, one big island that was turned into the cemetery I think in the Middle Ages, so it's a very old place. And it was just fascinating, that the way this lady looked, you know, and uh, so I, I took that and then I just started combining other elements of, of things from, from that trip and from other trips and came up with kind of a, I don't know, kind of like a haunted theme, sort of a, kind of a moody theme, I think it is. I use the, I use the current form of pho Photoshop, which is the Creative Cloud, so CS, CS7, CS6, I can't remember, but, um, so those tools to merge and then, and then of course blend all the different images, cut them out and then put them all together. So it's kind of like making a regular collage, you know, if you cut photos out of paper, we've all done that and then sticking them all together. It's much the same way, just with technology. So kind of neat.